Welcome back to another CBB Talk with your boy, Will Dickinson. Here it is. We got a round two, you know, round two, not preview, but reaction from day one. Sorry I didn't get an episode out after Friday. Um, I wasn't going to do it really late night. I was super tired. And then I woke up really late. And by the time I woke up, I woke up at like 10. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to pull one out because I, I was too tired. And then the game started at 12. But yeah, if you want to see my reaction to my FDU um over Purdue we can talk about that in a little bit but that's on my TikTok um I try to put in my bio it's WD Sports News or something like that I probably should change the name but I think that's what it is anyways you can go look at that um on my TikTok because it was like that's that that's one of the craziest games I've ever witnessed in my life one of the biggest upsets if not ever the biggest upset but let's talk about these second round games from Saturday and then look a little bit forward to today Arkansas takes down the number one team in the nation. Not the number one team in the nation. The, num- the defending champs, number one seed. But Kansas goes down. I was wearing a can. Look, I'm still wearing my Kansas shirt from yesterday. That was a disappointing game for me. I'm rooting for Kansas. I didn't. I had Kansas going to my Elite Eight, man. And it sucks that Bill Self didn't get the chance to coach him because I think, yeah, if he coaches him, I believe Kansas wins this game, right? Lose by one point without Bill Self. You know, Arkansas is a team that came into this year. Top 10 team with three five-star freshmen, a Ricky Council, and Trayvon Brazil. And, of course, Trayvon Brazil's out. Nick Smith's been out this whole year. And that's crazy. Nick Smith plays 16 minutes, has zero points in this one. And it was just really Debo Davis, 25 in this one. Ricky Council, 21. 10 from Jordan Walsh off the bench there. Anthony Black, four points. But it was just the timely buckets from Debo Davis and Ricky Council got them done there. Jalen Williams had a good game. And, um, you know, not big game from Grady Dick and the bench didn't perform. But Kansas, foul trouble from KJ Ams really hurt them. He only had 26 minutes in this one. Kevin McCullough fouls out at the end of the game. So that, that, that really hurt, right? And shout out to Arkansas. Eric Musselman did, his, did a great coaching job there. They put the pressure on Kansas. They hustled for every rebound, and I think at, at some point, you know, it kind of overwhelmed them. Makai Mitchell was good. Um, Kamani Johnson, um, 10 rebounds in this one, right? And they didn't made nothing easy for Kansas. There was a lot of fouls in this one, which kind of slowed up the game there, And and but they got it done without Debo Davis, who had one of his best games, if not the best game of his career in the second round against a, a number one seed, right? Kansas Falls and we won't see a defending champion, and there hasn't been a defending champion to make the Sweet 16 since 2016. So maybe next year, if I can remember that stat, I won't pick the defending champion to go far. And, you know, maybe, I've, maybe I'm a fool, but I just didn't see um, I didn't see Kansas losing this game, man. They, they had control for most of this game, and Arkansas just stayed in it. And then they, they got good stops, and they didn't let Kansas get anything easy around the basket. Dewan Harris wasn't 100%. He had a very good game, I I thought. I thought he was one of the most impactful play, players on the floor for Kansas. And and um, it just sucks that they, they lose in that fashion without – you don't get to, your head coach to, you know, be be on the sidelines during the game. But um, Kansas played um a, a good enough game, but Arkansas played better. They got the win. Ricky Council, I mean, what he played every minute in this one, he was really just an impact player. He had zero fouls in this one in a game that had three players foul out for Arkansas. That's just, I mean, impressive, really. Arkansas, you know, bowed through foul trouble, and they, they got the job done when it needed the most there. Kansas tried to miss that free throw at the end, but they get it back to Anthony Black. And Arkansas is moving on to Sweet 16 for the third straight year. I mean, it's just cool. This 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 team didn't make a Sweet 16 from from twenty from nineteen ninety six to two thousand eighteen. They made zero Sweet 16 or nineteen ninety seven to two thousand and twenty. They made zero Sweet 16s, so and now they've made three straight in a row under Eric Musselman. That's just done an amazing job right there. Um, they've had great players come to this program. This team was thought to be the best one yet. They bowed through a lot of injuries throughout the year, but luckily they got the. But this team's coming together at the right time, and we'll see if they get St. Mary's or UConn. We'll we will see, and if they they can beat both those teams, man. Um, thought, last year we either thought to see an Arkansas versus UConn game in the second round, four versus five, and we didn't get it. 
And then this year we, we might get it in the Sweet 16. So really just um a great performance from Arkansas. And we will not see back-to-back champs there. But good season from Kansas. We'll see if Jalen Wilson goes. I'm expecting Grady Dick to. I think that's Kevin McCullough's last game. I'm not sure about DeJuan Harris's. Kansas team will look a lot different next year. Um, but we can look at that in the future. So, I mean, great game from Arkansas, and they pull off an upset. Um, and the defending champ will not go to the Sweet 16 again. The second biggest story, which is crazy, is the 15 seed making the Sweet 16 for the third straight year. 2021, we had Oral Roberts. 2022, we had St. Peter's. And this year, another Jersey team, Princeton. Princeton plays Missouri. Missouri throughout the year was the worst three-point shooting defense. One of the worst in the whole country was the worst in the SEC. And it really showed in this one. Like they Utah State did not shoot the ball well in the first round matchup. But in this one, Princeton really just was amazing in this one. I mean, Peters had 17. I think he had five threes. I mean, it was just insane. 22 from Langbird there. And Uva Dumwa, um, Probably their most impactful player just had nine. That we had nine rebounds, nine assi- five assists. He was really all over the court there. And Missouri was really just out of this game the whole time. They never really got any big runs there. And when, when Princeton's hitting threes like that, it's going to be really hard to beat them, right? Because they went to a zone and they were still getting open looks. And Missouri just looked slow, looked not ready um, in this this whole game, really. And, yeah, we'll, we'll see Princeton move on again. And this doesn't feel like as big of a story as it was last year. And maybe it's because when St. Peter's did it, no one really knew St. Peter's. No one knew really that university. And now I think everyone knows Princeton. It's an Ivy League. It's a famous school. And now you're just seeing them make the Sweet 16. So it doesn't feel like a true, true underdog, even though it obviously is. And we'll see who they can get. They can play a Baylor um, who has a very bad defense. That's a winnable game. They play Creighton, who, you know, is hot and cold. So... Who knows if they can if an L15 can make the Elite Eight, which would be crazy. And maybe it's not as big as a story because we of course we had FDU do it um against Purdue, which was again one of the craziest upsets ever. But Princeton's back to the Elite Eight. Kobe Brown had 12 there. Golston had ni- uh, 19. It just just wasn't a good game. Demory Hush had two points. And that really hurts when your your second best player has two points there. And Missouri, you know, good year in their first year, Dennis Gates. I didn't expect them to make the second round, but they that's a winnable game that you if you go look and say you play a 15 seed in the second round, you you should be able to win this game and get to the Sweet 16. They couldn't do that in Princeton. We'll see them next week, and we'll see who they can get because um, that will be a very, very exciting game. San Diego State, man, has had a dominating performance over Furman, and that was really good to see. The Mountain West gets a team in the Sweet 16. San Diego State's in there, man. And um, they proved, I think they would have beat Virginia if they got them. And that just proves Virginia plays down their competition because Furman did not look good, man. They could not hit. Mike Bothwell at 15, but Slauson only played 20 minutes and Falcho really the whole game there. And, um, yeah, San Jose State was amazing. I mean, they they run a deep rotation. rotation. They get nine players that play more than 15 minutes in this one. And that's just impressive for the college team. They they. they to do a four-man sub right there. The, the player that played the most minutes was Matt Bradley in 27. We had 16 from Parrish off the bench. Trammell had 13. Lamont Butler, 12. Matt Bradley, 10. This team is just, again, it's a it's a, it's a full-team effort from San Diego State. They play great team defense. Mensa's a beast at the rim, um, and it's hard, to, it's hard to get inside on them. Their defense is really just that good. And in March, defense wins more, more, more often, and – Maybe I was a fool for a down in Tennessee. We can talk about that in a little bit, right? Because I I didn't believe in Tennessee because their offense has been bad this whole year. They're missing their point guard. But when you have an elite defense, you can beat anyone in college basketball more often than having just an elite offense. And we saw that with San Diego State. They were just hounding firm in this whole game, and they ended up dominating them and getting a 23-point win. So San Diego State, you know, is going to have to play Alabama. And Alabama looked really good in, in, in their game. Brandon Miller had 19 points after having zero in the first round. Javon Quinterly has hit a new gear this year. He's playing his best basketball at the right time. Alabama, of course, another deep team. So it's going to be an elite offense versus an elite defense. And a lot of time, elite defense wins. But Alabama's no slouch on the defensive end either. They have a lot of NBA guys. 
I think that's what's going to be the problem for San Diego saying this one is going against a team with NBA caliber players. They haven't gone against that quite yet. This is a new test for San Diego State. If they can get to the Elite Eight, Alabama's looked really good throughout the tournament. They have two 20-point victories. And Nate Oates is, is on a mission to get this a national championship. And right now, Alabama's the clear favorite. But San Diego State will be a tough matchup for them because of their defense, because they have a deep rotation. So foul trouble is not really ever a problem for San Diego State, which I always like in a team, right? Because we saw um, Kansas really struggle when their team got into foul trouble. And when you have a deep team like Bama, like San Diego State, you don't have to worry about foul trouble as much. Duke Duke lost. I do go into the Final Four, man. I, I was a big believer in Duke. I really thought that this team had the potential to win it all. They were playing hot basketball. They had, what, 10 in a row going into this game. And I thought, yep, this this is it. I mean, they got up in the matchup that I thought was a good one in Tennessee, who has bad offense. And Tennessee played real physical defense there. In the second half, it finally got some offense. But in the first half, man, Tennessee's defense was just all over Duke. Duke had, what, multiple stretches of, like, four minutes where they couldn't get any buckets there. And we saw... um. Olivier Oliver Olivier I don't know Nikwau um twenty seven in this one he's a thirty one percent three point shooter and he hits three threes in the second half all over the court really carried Tennessee in that second half had twenty three of the thirty eight Vescovy was good Mayshack you know didn't get a lot of big minutes but I do was good Jalen Phillips um kind of looked like what they thought he was gonna be just you know dunking the ball great defense they play a good team. Great team defense in this one. Tyler Key, you know, 24 points, only at three minutes, but he was still impactful out there, and Duke couldn't really get anything going. Flipkowski got hit in the face early. Roach was in foul trouble, and no Mark Mitchell, I think, was a key factor. He's such a good defender there, and he he's more he's just a bigger body to put on players, and without him, Duke wasn't as deep, and when they got into foul trouble, they had to go to more Jacob Granderson, who played 18 minutes in this one. They only got... Um, 23 minutes from their defense. So I think if you have Makai Mitchell in there, you got a deeper team. And Lively had, didn't get one shot attempt. So that's just great defense from Tennessee, and they're moving on. And now they got a friendly matchup whether you're going to play FAU or FDU. So Tennessee is looking to make the Elite Eight for, I think, the first time in a, a while, maybe first time under Rick Barnes. And um, yeah, I mean, just uh, this this is not the most t- talented Tennessee team he's had, but this is a team that got a nice break, and it's a great defensive team, and they have a potential to make a Final Four just because of their defense. They're not the most talented team. Duke's more talented team than them, but they play great team, and Rick Barnes is an amazing coach, and Duke had inexperience, which is which struggles in March a lot of the time there, and Tennessee is moving on. After just playing just amazing defense, and then their offense, you know, got hot in the second half. UCLA survives against Northwestern. It was looking bad early. Northwestern played great in that second half, uh, but they couldn't get the job done. Boo Booey was good. Adolji was good. Nicholson was big down low for Northwestern. But at the end of the day, you had a great team effort from UCLA. Jaime Hawkins ends up with 24 points. We'll see if Dave Singleton is good to go. He did roll his ankle at the end of the game, but he was out in the handshake line there. It looked really bad in the replay, but luckily it was he was good enough to, you know, give it a go at the end of the game. Bona, Adam Bona plays in this one. And then yes, UCLA is not a deep team. So they're gonna need Singleton to play if if they play a Gonzaga team because Gonzaga's a deeper team than UCLA, but UCLA ends up getting the job done there. Big game from Jaime Hawkes. Amari Bailey is play, also playing his best basketball at the right time there. This is when you want to be playing your best basketball, and that's what Amari Bailey's doing. He had 14 and 6 assists there. Tiger was good, had 12 of 12 on the line. Didn't make a shot, but didn't really matter. He was playmaking, had 7 assists in this one. UCLA is a tough team. They're not fully healthy. I think that's what's going to hurt them eventually. But right now, of course, they, I think they got one of the most friendly breaks um, with their first two matchups. Of course, UNCW, everyone thought it was going to be a tough team. They rolled through them. And Northwestern, I think, was an easier seven seed. It was unlike uh, playing at A&M or a Penn State. But UCLA advances. They keep playing good basketball. Jaime Huck is one of the best players in the country. Texas got the job done over Penn State. Shout out to Penn State. Jalen Pickett, Winter, Andrew Funk, all these guys are, man, just amazing players, man, who have just, just a great story from Penn State, a team that you never expect 
to be here. I did an amazing job for Michael Shrewsbury. Penn State is one of the most fun teams. I was rooting for Penn State. Of course, they just got a really tough matchup. They probably got the best two seed in the tournament, a team that can legitimately win it all in Texas. But Penn State, great effort. They just couldn't hit as much shots. And, um, and at the end of the day, that one hurt. Texas, on the other hand, man, I think this team can win the national championship the more I watch them. Dylan DeSue at 28 in this one. This is a guy who what averages 10 points a game, who's n- usually not their main guy. And in this one, he did it. Dylan Mitchell starts and plays nine minutes, and it doesn't seem to rub him the wrong way. Serge Barry Rice, 13 this one. Best pump fake in basketball. Marcus Carr, 10. Struggled in this one. Didn't matter. Tyrese Hunter, you know, a guy who we thought was going to be one of the best players in the in the conference, in the Big 12, you know, he's really just a third, fourth option in this one, and he's okay with that. And when a guy got going like the Sioux, they kept giving him the ball. Rodney Terry's done an amazing job. I believe that he deserves to be the coach for Texas next year. Kristen Bishop, you know, this team's just deep, right? Brock Cunningham, they had nine players play, but at the end of the day, you had your top eight players going. You're going to play them the whole game there. They didn't really get into foul trouble at all. And even if they did, I think Texas had a deep enough team that can, you know, if they did get into foul trouble, they'll be able to compete with other teams there. And at the end of the day, in the second half, Penn State didn't hit enough shots there. Jalen Pickett, man, one of my most favorite players. And 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 after the Elite Eight, I will be doing my awards for the whole nation. And one of my awards will be Will's favorite player. And maybe Jalen Pickett will win that one. We'll see. But, man, um, shout out to Texas going to this um, Sweet 16. And I think they're going to get a friendly matchup because I think Pitt can legitimately beat Xavier. That's the first tip off at 12-10 on CBS. So that will be a really good game. Houston got the job done against Auburn. Great second half performance from the Cougars. And and Auburn was up 15 and a half, I, I believe. They were up 15 and a half. And I was I was I was like, oh my God, Houston's about to lose to Auburn. And I was gonna say, if this Auburn team got more wins in the postseason than last year's Auburn team, it would have been weird. Janai Broom could not hit free throws in that second half. I think he finished six for 16 from the line. And Auburn made four field goals that whole second half. And when Sasser got into foul trouble, Shed was in foul trouble. Houston played better. Tremont Mark might have had his best game of his career. 26 in this one. And the freshman guards, Arsenal, Eli Sharp, they, they came out and played huge minutes in this one. And Sasser looked fully healthy, which is great to see. 22 in this one, hit multiple step-back threes. And, and this Houston team went fully healthy, like we saw in that second half, is one of the best teams in the country. They scored 50 in the second half there. And Houston's going to have a legit chance to win a national championship. And I was worried about them going into this um, this game because, of course, it's in Alabama and they're not healthy, but this game, you know, um, calmed my nerves a lot. And I think Miami or Indiana will give them a tough run, which I'm very excited for this game, that game later. But I feel confident with Houston to be able to get to a Final Four. And I think if they play Texas in the Elite Eight, man, that's going to be one of the best games of the year because both those teams really have national championship caliber rosters. So, yeah, that's really it. Today, we got a lot of good games, starting with, Pittsburgh and Xavier, that's just going to be a phenomenal game. Both those teams, you know, are playing hotter of recent. Xavier still dealing with injuries, and they they escaped that first round game. Pitt has now won two in a row after, out of the first four. Played great defense in both games. This is going to be the toughest challenge for them. I think Pitt has the, the chance to pull off an upset and get to a sweet 16. Kentucky-Kansas State might be the game I'm looking forward to the most. I want Kansas State to win this game, man. I think they have the roster that can make an Elite Eight Final Four. Just the caliber of players, Keontae Johnson, Marquise Noel, Jerome Tang's done an amazing job, but Kentucky's always a tough challenge, and Sheway's going to be a problem for Kansas State. I don't. I think they Kentucky matches up well with them, and Sheway's going to be the problem. So if Kansas State can team rebound, I think they have a good chance of winning. Michigan State, Marquette. Marquette's going to have, a, I think, a challenge with Michigan State, but they're playing such – just such great basketball recently that I think Marquette will have the chops to, you know, go up against them. St. Mary's, UConn. St. Mary's defense is really good, but UConn's offense is even better. And I know a good defense wins a lot of time in March, but I think UConn matches up very well with St. Mary's, and they're too athletic, in my opinion, for St. Mary's. And I think we'll see UConn advance in this one. 
Fairly Dickinson, what an amazing story that was. Just shut down Purdue. Edie was just not good, and Purdue was terrible against them. They play FAU, and FAU, FAU you know, but that game against Memphis was one of the best games of the tournament so far. I expect FAU to get this done, and if Fairly Dickinson can somehow pull off another upset, then I'll be talking about them tomorrow, man. And, um, yeah, and FAU, if they go against Tennessee, I think everyone's going to think Tennessee's on Mac win because no one really knows a lot about this FAU team, but watch this game tonight on True TV because I think FAU have a chance to do it, um, do it and, you know, beat Fairleigh Dickinson, and I think it'll get more people talking, but if Fairleigh Dickinson can do this, it'll be the greatest Cinderella story of all time. Creighton versus Baylor is another interesting one. This is a great matchup. Two amazing offenses going against each other. Great guards for Baylor. Ryan Kalkbrenner for Creighton. This is going to be a great matchup there. We'll see how Baylor can defend Ryan Kalkbrenner because at the end of the day, that will probably be the biggest um, tell of the game. Miami versus Indiana is probably the best game for me. Trey Jackson Davis going against an injured North Chad O'Meara I think will be the difference. I have Miami winning in my bracket, but I think Indiana will win this game now, just seeing the way they played against Kent State, who I thought was was going to beat them, and they came out and dominated Miami kind of struggled offensively against Drake, and we'll see if they can get it back going. And then the last game of the night is TCU versus Gonzaga. I expect Gonzaga to win this one, but TCU is, again, a team with high expectations. Mike Miles is a guy who can light it up. We saw them escape against Arizona State in a thriller uh, late, late on Friday night. And we can see if Gonzaga can get back to a Sweet 16 for another year and go against UCLA. In Las Vegas, that will just be an amazing game. So, yeah, that's the podcast. Go watch some more college basketball. It's another day. Day four of all-day basketball. There's nothing like it. March Madness is the best. And um, get on your couch. Peace.